Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa. It is Wednesday, June 12th, 2013. I'm Dimyake Mwakalielie, in for Shaka Sali, who is on assignment on the continent. Hi, Mariama. Hello, Dimi. How are you today? Great, great. And hello to all our viewers and listeners around the globe. I am Mariama Diallo, your social media reporter. Well, today we'll take a look at the credibility of the International Criminal Court as the international judicial body comes under scrutiny by the African Union for racial bias based on its prosecution of African leaders for war crimes and other atrocities. A topic that unleashed a lot of passion on both sides all over our social media platform. We'll reveal some of them ahead on, on Straight Talk Africa. Well, the African Union, a political institution, and the International Criminal Court at The Hague, an independent judicial tribunal, currently have somewhat of a tense relationship, as my colleague Paul Sisko explains. The International Criminal Court, governed by the Rome Statute, is the first permanent treaty-based international criminal court established to help end impunity for the perpetrators of the most serious crimes of concern to the world. It has deep roots with the war crimes trials in Nuremberg and Tokyo at the end of the Second World War. I declare open the first session of the Assembly of States Parties to the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. The first session of the Assembly of States Parties to the Rome Statute, the governing body of the then newly created International Criminal Court, took place at the United Nations in 2002. Hans Corell, former UN Secretary General Legal Counsel to the International Criminal Court. We genuinely hope that the International Criminal Court shall help spare future generations from the sufferings experienced by so many in the past. The courts received complaints about crimes in at least 139 countries, but currently the prosecutor has opened 18 investigations into eight situations, all in Africa. The Democratic Republic of Congo, Uganda, the Central African Republic, Sudan, Darfur, Kenya, Libya, Ivory Coast, and Mali. Of these eight, Four of the now 122 states party to the Rome Statute, Uganda, the DRC, Central African Republic, and Mali, have referred situations occurring on their territories. Two were referred by the United Nations Security Council, the situation in Darfur and in Libya, both non-party states, and two were initiated by the court's prosecutor, Kenya and Ivory Coast. With what might be called war crimes being committed across the world, it appears to some that the ICC is only keen to pursue cases on the continent. Ethiopian Prime Minister and African Union Chairperson, Haley Mariam de Salang. Out of uh, those people who have been indicted by ICC, 99% are Africans. So this shows that there is something flaw within the system in ICC and we object that, and therefore there should be a clear process that should take place. That doesn't mean that African leaders are cooperating with impunity and crimes. International Criminal Court Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda. If you look at ICC's concentration in Africa today, and I have said this over and over again, um, I always say that it is as a result of the engagement by the African people, by the African leaders, to ICC that we are mostly in Africa. We say that ICC is af targeting Africans. And I have said this also over and over again. All of the victims that we have in our cases in Africa are African victims. They are not from another continent. They are African victims. And they are the ones who are suffering these crimes. From the Gambia. A former deputy prosecutor, lawyer, and civil servant, she was overwhelmingly appointed prosecutor of the court last year. Why don't we look at the positive side? Why don't we look at the fact that African leaders are taking leadership in international criminal justice? And also, why don't we say that ICC is targeting those who are targeting Africans? Because this is what we're doing. On Tuesday, the ICC prosecutor opposed the request by Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta to have his trial delayed, for the third time, until next January. 
Mr. Kenyatta and his deputy, William Ruto, are accused of masterminding post-election violence five years ago that killed more than 1,200 people. Both men denied the charges. The African Union says Kenyatta's case should be dropped and handled internally by the East African nation. The ICC trial is scheduled for July 9th. Paul Cisco, VOA News.